What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and this is Rebuilding the Jacksonville Jaguars, episode number two, and we are sticking with the theme of the week, and that is going over what position group, what group of talents have disappointed us, and which one of them has rose to expectations, and which one of them has kind of exceeded expectations. Today, I asked my guest, what would they grade the position groups in 2020? Today, we realize how good some position groups have performed this year and how some have fell short, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we realize which position groups the Jaguars can build around and which ones need some work. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is episode number two of Rebuilding the Jacksonville Jaguars Position Grades. Hey, I'm John Shipley. I'm uh, the publisher of Beat reporter of Jaguar Report. Uh, I've you know, covered the Jaguars over there since about last August or so, and I cover them, you know, each day. Well, my name is Laurie Fitzpatrick. Um, I, uh, I don't like to call myself an analyst or anything, but uh, I used to play American uh, football for five and a half years. I played women's tackle football for four different leagues. I love the Jags, and um, I, I write articles for SI.com. Um, and uh, I also have a podcast, uh, Jaguars Brawl, and my own podcast called Ponytails Talking Pigskin. So I just pretty much like to talk about the game and yeah. Guys, I'm Dalton, also known as UCF Jaguar. I am a YouTuber on on YouTube, I guess <laughs> I should say. And uh, yeah, I post about Jaguars on Twitter and Instagram and all that different stuff on YouTube. How did you grade the quarterback play for the Jaguars in 2020? C minus. C minus. And then if you could just, you know, elaborate on Minshew and Luton's play just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Minshew, it's just uh, all the things that we were concerned about and all the things that he wasn't very good at last year, we were hoping that he could become better at. But, you know, when it comes to pocket presence, when it comes to the, you know, you know, the arm strength and um, really just the decisiveness in the pocket, like he didn't improve on it. You know what I mean? That's what he was – we were looking for the step forward and we were look we were hoping that he would take a step forward this year and um do it but he just didn't improve in that way and then we brought in Luton and Luton I mean he's been all right I kind of prefer him over Minshew but at the end of the day like who cares man it's yeah, like who cares like it's it, neither of those guys are our guys so um you know hopefully we keep losing and we get that top two pick C minus and what was your expectation? B minus. Minshew underperformed, in your opinion? Yes. Um, but I don't think he was supposed to be amazing or anything. I didn't think that. Sophomore year slump is a real thing, especially for a quarterback. Um, but I didn't think that he would, you know, digress as much as he did. It just feels like he's kind of seeing ghosts, but the line's not that bad. Yeah. You know, he's not even – he's not going through his reads. I think he's just scared. Um, and then you have the injury on top of it. Uh, but injury or not, C-. minus. My guess is they'll be picking number three. Uh, I think they're going to be picking behind the Jets and the Giants. Uh, I'm with you. I, I, I think Jag fans can already forget about Trevor Lawrence. The, the only chance they have is really if the Jets pick up two wins, and I don't know how that team is going to win two games. I could see them win maybe a game, you know, sneak an upset off somebody, maybe to fire Gase and get hyped up for a game. But I don't know how they're going to win two games. So I think they're going to be picking up number three, and I think they're going to have to strongly consider all three of the next quarterbacks. Uh, Justin Fields, uh, obviously, I think Fields is closer to Lawrence than any of the other quarterbacks are the Fields. That's been my take on them. But then the guys behind him are Trey Lance and uh, Zach Wilson. So I think those are the guys that Jaguars are, are more realistic to land. What about James Robinson? Uh, James Robinson, he's definitely been the brightest spot of the team. He's been awesome. Like, Dave Call will make a lot of questionable moves, and maybe the most questionable when it happened was cutting Leonard Fournette. I think I was just more upset that he went to the books. Um, you know, I mean, James Robinson, he's a better running back than Leonard Fournette has ever been. He's just – just better built for the running back position. I like that he's got a lower center of gravity, so it helps him with his balance and it helps him not get down as much. I mean, it's, it's got to be an A. I mean, he's 
he, he's been great. You know what I mean? He's, he can do he can do everything as a running back, except doesn't have really the top end speed. But I don't think he's necessarily needed it at many points this year. I would say uh, B plus. Um, I can't say A because he hasn't had as many like breakout runs. If it was an A, he would have like way more of those like damn like he's carrying the team to the win, but he's not winning any games. So. Offensive line. I would say B. Only be only because in the beginning of the season, it didn't seem like Minshew had much time. Offensive line gets a B minus. I think people are too hard about this offensive line. It's not that bad. Um, a lot of people say, oh, Minshew hasn't had a chance because the offensive line sucks. It's like, dude, like, if you look at him, he's literally forcing himself into sacks. Like, instead of stepping up in a pocket, he's trying to roll out of the pocket, and then he just gets, you know, eaten up for a sack. Like, offensive line's been better. It, 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 they've had some different streaks where, like, you know, where several drives happen and they haven't been good. But um, overall, like, you know, I think I think they've been playing pretty solid, so I got to give it a B minus. I think you're probably going to be looking to improve on from AJ Cam. Uh, I actually think Cam's had one of his better seasons this I year, agree. but it, I, I think even when he's playing at that level, he's probably still like peaks at like an okay guard. So he's not a bad player to have, but you could probably do better. Uh, I, I honestly think Cam Robinson has earned like a mid-level contract extension. Uh, obviously not laying me tons of money, but maybe like Deion Dawkins type money from the Bills. You know, yeah, I think he's been a decent left tackle this year, and I think they'd rather go into 2021 with a veteran there rather than a rookie or some veteran who might suck. Uh, otherwise, I, 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 I've been impressed by Norwell and Leonard this season. If there's one player I think that they need to improve, it's Jawan Taylor. Uh, he's at, he, I think he's already approaching allowed the amount of pressures at this point this year than he did all of last year. So he's not going to be going anywhere, obviously. They spent a second-round pick on him last year, but he needs he needs to pick up his play. What about the wide receivers? Um, wide receivers, I would probably give this one, I don't know, I'd say probably a C plus, just because, I don't know, like it, it's been nice with DJ Chark and LaVisca Chenault, but I don't think, you know, I mean, DJ Chark, he isn't heading toward a 1,000-yard season. And nobody else really is. Chris Conley kind of like dropped off. I think Keelan Cole's played pretty well. But I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, the receivers have not been producing a lot um, really this year. So I'd probably have to give it a C plus. You're always looking to add guys to the mix of the receiver position. Uh, they entered this year with six receivers on the active roster. And the reality is two of those receivers are unlikely to be here next year. And uh, D.D. Westbrook and Chris Conley. Uh, add in the fact that Keelan Cole was on the last year of his contract and there's a chance he might not be here either. Uh, I, I think if the Jaguars can enter 2021 with DJ Chark, Keelan Cole, and LaVisca Chenault as like their top three receivers, I think that can I think that can get the job done. I, I really do. Maybe um over projecting my confidence in them, but I think that's a good group to start with. And then you have Colin Johnson as a decent depth receiver. They would probably need to add at least one more guy who who was quality enough of a player to get 10 to 15 snaps a game but I think you can win with that group I would say uh they're I would say they're doing pretty well um I would say B uh B it's just the tight ends I would say is, is low because I just feel like they're that should be a right hand man as a quarterback if, if, if it's like you know this team it's more the running back than the tight end as the right hand man so, like, I don't really like that because, you know, running backs run the ball. They're not receivers. Tight ends are receivers. So, they run the ball. James O'Sonnessy, the uh, starting reps over top Tyler Eifert. I think it's time to just see what he can do as your number one tight end because it's clear that Eifert uh, isn't a solution there. To give the overall offensive grade. Um, overall offensive grade, I guess I'd have to give it a C plus. I mean, they put up points and everything, but um, I don't think they've made the – you know they've made the crucial drives when it really matters those moments where it's you have to score that's like you could tell what you are in those moments especially like if you need to score and you don't and you continually don't score 
as the other team is shutting you out. Like, if anything, that tells you that, you know, they're, they're not playing as well. Like, when, when they're not able to, to, to take the lead. Um, and so, like, there are times where, you know, this season they kind of are, then the defense kind of shits the bed again. So that's- I think this team is at least not the worst team in the league. I think the Jets are clearly worse. Uh, I mean, the Jaguars, they have a couple of players, you know, Milo's Jack. DJ Chark, Brandon Linder, James Robinson, Chenault. Uh, they have players that 2013 and 2012 just didn't have. So while things look bad right now, I don't think they're as bad as them, even if the win loss doesn't show it. You know, they play with, they, and there's been times where it's like, yo, like, you know, they're down 10. Oh my God, they cut it to within a possession. And then they get the ball back, but they don't really capture the lead. So, and I know the defense is a lot to blame with it, but. Um, I mean, you see kind of a lot. Like, the defenses in the NFL this year aren't that good, and you're, you're seeing offensive kind of, uh, you know, overtake that. And I just, you know, and, and it probably gets a C-plus just because maybe we don't have the personnel to really exceed that. But I don't know. That's probably my grade from this year. C. Um, I would say, like, a C-minus. Man, that's so tough, though, because I feel like when the defense plays bad, the offense plays well. And when the offense plays bad, the defense plays well. And it's just like, can't we get some wins here? Like, exactly. um, so it's like, it's so tough. Like, but yeah, I would say overall, I think they are underperforming. And that was Rebuilding the Jacksonville Jaguars, episode number two, Offensive Position Grades. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, just have a great rest of your day.